In this webcast, we're going to look at bond energy calculations, so that way we can find out the chemical potential for certain reactions. The bond energies that we are going to be looking at are shown here in this table, and this is just a reference table for you to use when calculating your bond enthalpies. Just by looking at this table, you can see some bonds that appear to be stronger than others, and some that appear to be weaker. For example, the fluorine-fluorine bond is only 37 kcals per mole, whereas the carbon-carbon bond is going to be 83 kcals per mole. Therefore, that fluorine-fluorine bond is going to be weaker than the carbon-carbon bond, and that's the reason why fluorine is more reactive. When you're calculating these average bond energies, one thing to keep in mind is that all of these bond energies are assigned a negative value by convention. That is just the convention that's been adopted by chemists. So keep in mind, all of the values you see in this table that you will ever use are negative. Many students get that mixed up, so I want you all to be very, very certain that you're only using negative value. So how can we use this table to help us in our bond enthalpy calculations? Let's show an example. What you do is you count up all of the bond changes in the reactants and in the products. For example, we have this carbon-carbon double bond reacting with HBr to form this carbon-carbon single bond and the elements of HBr are added across that double bond. One hydrogen is added to the carbon and the bromine is added to the other carbon. So we can calculate whether this particular reaction is favorable or unfavorable based on bond enthalpy calculations. Let's look at our reactants first. One bond that was broken is this carbon-carbon double bond. So we broke this double bond between carbon and carbon, and it's assigned a value of negative 146 kcals per mole. Notice again that it's a negative value, and we just took this value straight from the table. Another bond that was broken in our reactants is HBr. An HBr single bond is worth negative 87 kcals per mole. So we put that in the table. Nothing else changed in our reactants. So our net energy for all the bonds that are broken in our reactants is negative 233 kcals per mole. Now let's take a look at our products. One bond that was made is this carbon-carbon single bond. Notice that we still have to include this carbon-carbon single bond because we broke the carbon-carbon double bond. In order to calculate the difference for this particular double bond being broken, we need to factor in that we broke a double bond and made a single bond. And that's why we put that carbon-carbon single bond value in our table of negative 83 kcals per mole. We've also created a carbon-hydrogen single bond. That's put in the table at minus 99 kcals per mole. And then a carbon-bromine single bond as well of negative 68 kcals per mole. And those are the three bonds that were made in the course of this reaction. Add those up, get negative 250 kcals per mole. So now we get the overall change in our energy for this particular reaction. We take the bonds made, minus the bonds broken, and we get minus 250, minus negative 233, equals negative 17 kcals per mole. And this negative 17 kcals per mole means that it is a favorable reaction. This negative energy means that we've moved down in our chemical potential chart. Remember that a higher value of our chemical potential means that something is more reactive. So we have an overall net change of minus 17 kcals per mole. We have lower in energy, therefore creating a more stable product than our reactant. 